Today will be part 53 in this series, Scriptures Often Ignored. And today we're going to be talking about when does the day begin and getting a better proper understanding of when days begin and end according to Scripture. And we'll be focusing specifically on the creation account and the Torah accounts to really see exactly what scripture is talking about. And because this is a truth network, we use the restored names of our father, Yahua, and the son, our Mashak, the Messiah, Yahusha. And for this word right here, we use the restored title of that word for our father, Yahua, Alua, from Strong's H433, which also means Almighty One, singular. And so we're here in the very first chapter of scripture that talks about the creation account. But before we go into detail about this, we're going to further understand exactly what the word day means in scripture. Now here we are at Strong's Concordance, H3117, and the word here that's used, they pronounce it yam, but the correct pronunciation is yum, which means day, as you can see right here. And according to the NASB translation, as you can see, there are a whole lot of translations that the word day can mean, and that's something that we have to remember when we're looking at the language and when we're looking at Hebrew, is that Hebrew words can have more than one meaning Hebrew words can have more than one definition so just because it uses the word day 1115 times in one location or in those respective locations it can also mean something else in many other locations and so you see this word used over 2300 times in the original covenant alone and as you can see it can mean day it can mean days it can also mean afternoon it can mean age it can mean always there are a whole lot of definitions that this one word can mean and can be used interchangeably in fact, the word yum, which is commonly translated as day, can also mean a bunch of other words in the English, because did you know this word can also mean time? It can also mean the word year. It can also refer to age. It can also refer to a season. The word can also be translated as always, continually, and even ever. And I've also listed some scriptures right here so you can see it for yourself and go to them and see exactly what it means. And if you go to them in the Hebrew, you will actually see the word yum or H3117 used there. But as you see, it's translated how many different ways in the English. And it's important to keep that in mind when we're trying to understand exactly what this word means and what it's referring to and when do days begin according to scripture. Now we're here at the creation account in the very first chapter of scripture, but what you're going to see is that the word yum which commonly means day, can also mean four different time periods. And you see that in just this chapter alone and in chapter two, actually, because here in Brashiat or the first chapter, verses five, it says, and Alua called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there came to be evening and there came to be morning one day. So you see right here that the word day here is used as a 12 hour period. But if you scroll down to verse 14, this is what you get. It says, and Alua said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the Shamyam to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. So we see right here that the word day here is used to mean day and night. It's used for a 24 hour period of time as opposed to a 12 hour period of time as we saw in verse five. But in the creation account alone, the word day can have a different connotation because now we're here in the second chapter in verse 4 where it says, These are the births of the Shamyam and the world when they were created in the day that Yahua Alua made the world and the Shamyam. And we see here this word day is right here, but when you actually look at the context, this is talking about the entire creation week. So we see that this word, when it's placed in its proper context, it's talking about the entire creation week. 
So when you carefully look at the context, you see that the yum in the creation week alone, it can refer to a 12 hour period as we saw in verse five, a 24 hour period as we saw in verse 14 and just the first chapter alone. It can also refer to the entire creation week as we saw in chapter two verses four. But what we're also going to look at is the fourth definition, which is the summary of a certain time frame, And we're going to see that when it comes to evening and morning and this is going to help us define when days actually begin and I'm going to briefly summarize this because here we are in verse 5 where Alua calls the light day and the darkness he calls night and then verse 5 says towards the end here and there came to be evening and there came to be morning one day. So we see right here in this verse that one day that's defined there is both the evening and the morning, and that's just for day one. And we see this once again when talking about the creation account because now we're in verse 8 where it says, and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the second day. Now, many other translations use the phrase evening and morning or the evening and then the morning. And then we're going to keep going because verse 13 talks about the third day where it says evening and then morning. And there came to be evening and there came to be morning on the third day. And then verse 19, we see once again, and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the fourth day. And then verse 23 says, and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the fifth day and then if you scroll down all the way to the last verse of the chapter verse 31 it says and Alua saw all that he had made and see it was very good because this is talking about the sixth day when everything had been created and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the sixth day why is this so important? It's important because the creation week and all throughout the creation days, it's letting you know exactly when these days begin on each of the days because they begin in the evening. Yes, days begin in the evening. They do not begin at midnight. They do not begin at sun up. They do not begin at dawn. They begin at the evening. And we see that all throughout scripture, not to mention how we see the references in phrases unclean until the evening all throughout the Torah not to mention the darkness and then the light we see that analogy darkness and then light and we'll be talking more about that later on in this video to come but before we do we're going to be talking about the phrase unclean until the evening because you see that all throughout the Torah especially in the book of Uyakra Leviticus now, some places that you see this word and this phrase unclean until evening or some translations just have even are all throughout the law. They're all throughout the Torah, especially when it comes to ceremonial laws in Leviticus chapter 11. And these laws have to do with clean and unclean foods. But you see in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 24, verse 27, verse 31 and verse 39, it says shall be unclean until the evening or evening. Even. And then verse 25, 28, 32, and 40 say, be unclean until the evening. If you look at Leviticus chapter 14, verses 46, this has to do when it comes to laws regarding skin diseases and leprosy. It says, quote, shall be unclean until the evening. Then also there's Leviticus chapter 15 that has to do with laws regarding bodily functions, body release, running issues, seed of copulation, and sexual uncleanness. And if you look at verses 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 16, 17, 21, 22, and 27, you'll see that it says, and be unclean until the evening. Also verses 10, 19, and 23, and verse 18 in chapter 15. If you look at Leviticus chapter 17, which talks about eating blood, which is forbidden, it says in verse 15, and be unclean until the evening. And then Leviticus chapter 22, verses 6, also says, shall be unclean until the evening. 
So what that means is if somebody had a running issue or if someone had leprosy and they were trying to get clean, let's just say they had this throughout the day, they'd have to wait until the evening to be clean. And mind you, some of the laws said that they would have to wait seven days like if they had leprosy and on the eighth day they could be clean. Of course, it depends on each specific law. The reason it says unclean until evening because right when evening got there, that was the start to the new day at evening and therefore they were clean once the evening came in right after the sun went down, right after the sun goes down begins your new day, which is exactly why scripture says all throughout unclean until evening. But you also see that too, even in Leviticus chapter 23 that talks about the feast days and how the feast days in appointment to times are to be observed you see in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 5 when it comes to Pesach or Passover it says the 14th day of the first month at even so you see right there again evening and it also you're going to see phraseology between the two evenings and we're going to be talking more about that later on to come you also see this too in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 26 through 32 that talk about the day of atonement which says the ninth day of the month at even from evening until the evening because we know on the 10th day of the seventh month which is the day of atonement that is when it's to be observed according to Leviticus chapter 23 but note how it says in verse 32 at even from evening unto the evening is when the Shabbat is to be observed when it comes to this why does it say evening to evening because that's when days begin that's when the day began back then and even today right at the evening right when the sun goes down and if you would like to see this word in the actual language you can look here at strong's concordance h6153 where it says arab Arab is the correct pronunciation of the word to mean evening, which has the ayan, the rosh, and the bat to mean evening. And this word occurs 134 times throughout the original covenant, many of which we've already gone over when it comes to the ceremonial laws that are spoken of in Leviticus chapter 11, Leviticus chapter 14, Leviticus 15, Leviticus 17, and we'll be going over some more later on. But you can also look at the NSAB that says evening, evening, evenings, night, and even twilight too, which talks about the night. And you can also see right here some of the definitions too. In the scriptures where they're found but there are also places in scripture where you see dual in phrase right here which means between the two evenings i.e probably between the sun down and dark and you see this throughout a few places in scripture the reason that it says that is because that's letting you know one day is ending and the new day is beginning at the evening that's why it says between the two evenings because as you're going into a new day you're going into a new day once the evening comes in so you're leaving the previous day and going into the next day come the next evening we see the same account with that word used to mean evening or arab right here in Bamadbar or Numbers chapter 9. And we're going to be looking at the verses where it's used because it's used right here in verse 3 where it says, On the 14th day of this new moon, the reason this word is in italics is because it should not be there. The correct word should be month. But it says, Between the evenings, perform it at its appointed time. According to all its laws and right rulings, you perform Form. And notice how it says between the evenings to let you know that it's a new day. And then verse 5 says, so they performed the Pesach on the 14th day of the first new month. Notice how that word is in italics between the evenings once again in the wilderness of Sinai according to all that Yahua commanded Masha Moses so that the children of Yashral did and if you go down to verse 11 you see that once again on the 14th day of the second new month so this is talking about the second Passover between the evenings they perform it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they eat it and the context of this is talking about if for whatever reason they miss the first Pesach 
act, which was to be observed around the 14th day of the first month, well, then they had to observe a second one around the 14th day of the second month. And by the way, in scriptural times, this is talking about sometime during the spring. Okay, if you go down to verse 15, you also see once again, and on the day that the dwelling place was raised up, the cloud covered the dwelling place, the tent of the witness. From evening until morning, it was above the dwelling place like the appearance of fire. Now, why would it say evening until morning and not morning until evening? Because it's letting you know that this is when the day begins, right in the evening. And then also verse 21, where it says, And so it was when the cloud dwelt only from evening until morning. When the cloud was taking up in the morning, then they departed whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, they departed, but it dwelt with them starting in the evening because that's when the days begin. Now you also see this in Numbers chapter 19, which talks more about ceremonial laws and laws when it comes to the priests and what they are to do and the difference between clean and unclean. Now we see here in verse 7, it says, The Khan or the priest shall then wash his garments and shall bathe his body in water and afterward come into the camp. But the priest is unclean until the evening. And then it says, And he who is burning it washes his garments in water and shall bathe his body in water water and is unclean until the evening. He's unclean until the evening because the evening begins a new day. Once again, you see it right here in verse 10, unclean until the evening. You also see it in verse 19 right here and shall be clean in the evening, which it says right there. The reason it says that is because the evening begins a new day. We also see this in witnesses in verses 21 and 22, where it says in the one who touches the water for uncleanness is unclean until the evening and whatever the unclean be in touches is unclean and the being who touches it is unclean until evening and of course numbers 19 the context is talking about laws regarding water of purification and also the water of cleansing but what about when it comes to shabbat does scripture also tell us when shabbats begin Yes, indeed, because we see that here in Nahamya, or the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, where it talks about the Shabbat, and we're going to be reading verses 15 through 19 in their proper context, because it says here, in those days I saw in Yahuda those treading wine presses on the Shabbat, and bringing in sheaves, and loading donkeys with wine, grapes, and figs, and all kinds of burdens, because they were not supposed to be doing that, they were supposed to be resting which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So I warned them on the day they sold food, there's to be no buying or selling, and men of Tzur dwelt there, bringing in fish and all kinds of goods, and sold them on the Shabbat to the children of Yahuda and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Yahuda and said to them, What evil matter is this that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Do not your fathers do the same so that our Alua brought all this evil on us and on this city? Yet you bring added wrath on Yashral by profaning the Sabbath. And then verse 19 says, So it came to be when the gates of Jerusalem were shaded before the Sabbath that I commanded the doors to be shut and commanded that they should not be open till after the Shabbat. And I stationed some of my servants at the gates so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. But this verse right here lets you know when that actually began when it says when the gates of Jerusalem were shaded before the Sabbath you can also see this word it means dark and what other translations say now here's just a brief glimpse of what other translations say the NIV says when evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Shabbat I ordered the doors to be shut and not open until the Shabbat was open so notice how it says when the evening shadows fell on the gates and then it says as darkness fell from the New Living Translation, they added this word here, but let's keep going because the English Standard Version says, as soon as it began to grow dark right here, and then the NASB says, grew dark right there, and then the KJV, the most commonly used one says, and it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before Shabbat, because that's when the Shabbat was beginning, the Shabbat was beginning towards the evening, days begin in the evening, 
evening, and that's when the Shabbat begins right before the evening. And you also see witnesses of the day beginning in the evening when it comes to the analogy darkness to light. First there's darkness and then there's light. And you see that all throughout scripture in both the original covenant and the renewed covenant. You see it in the creation account, which we just went over how darkness begins. It first begins with the evening and then comes the morning, which begins day one, day two, day three, and so on, as we saw in the very first chapter of scripture. And then, of course, unclean until evening, darkness, then the light. There's also even tall yammer, Psalms chapter 30, verses five, where it says weeping may endure, but joy comes in the morning. And also, if you're into the Apocrypha, second Estras, chapter 6 verses 9 that also tells you that the end of Esau is the beginning of Jacob the end of all evil is the beginning of righteousness the end of darkness is the beginning of light because we know that the word of Yahuwah the law is light we know that the word of Yahuwah is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path but where else do we see that example darkness to light we see some more examples in scripture here and i'm just going to briefly go over them here in yasha Yahu, isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 we see the darkness to light we also see it in luke chapter 1 verses 79 we see it here in matad Yahu, matthew chapter 4 verses 16 first there's darkness and then there's light we see that too in john Yahu Kanan chapter 1 verses 5 the light shines in the darkness darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it because the darkness begins then comes the light and also 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 6 for Yahuwah who said light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the esteem of Yahuwah in the face of Yahusha once again darkness to light then we have 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a people for Aluwa's own possession so that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light well again we see the darkness to light calling us out of darkness out of religion out of babylon out of lawlessness and into the light which is the law the word of yahua which is the truth we also see in ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 for you were formerly darkness but now you are light in Yahuwah walk as children of light coming out of the darkness darkness to light once again and John Yahukanan 8 12 then Yahusha again spoke to them saying I am the light of the world he who follows me will no longer walk in the darkness but will have the light of life again darkness to light we see it in Acts 26 verses 18 Matthew chapter 10 verses 27 what I tell you in the darkness speak in the light and what you hear whispered in your ear proclaim upon the housetops mark chapter 4 verses 22 and so on so we see countless and countless and countless amounts of time all throughout scripture that the darkness comes first and then comes the light and this is the length of a day and yes days do begin at the evening days begin right at sundown that is when the days begin as we see all throughout scripture and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even recommendations on the scriptures, and if you would like more understanding, or if you just have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com. Again, my email is just truthunveiled 7727s not 3 at gmail.com. Also, if you have any questions regarding scriptures, and if you would like a recommendation of what scriptures that I use and the scriptures that I recommend, also email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com and make sure to put scriptures in the title of the email. If you have any questions about anything else, please be sure to email me. Prayerfully, this lesson was very helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying Shalom.